and winter is coming. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle, and welcome back to Winter is Coming! For the next few weeks, we'll be looking at the Cobra Extreme Conditions Arctic Assault Squad from 2008. This set was only available through online retailers and some comic book shops. 2008 was one hell of a year for G.I. Joe! There were no fewer than 182 figures being sold through various outlets, and that's not even counting convention and collector's club exclusives. For comparison, 2007 had just 30 figures. Since this is Winter is Coming, and this year marks the set's 10th anniversary, it seems appropriate to talk about it now. And today, we'll be looking at Scrap Iron, or Arctic Scrap Iron, as I'm calling him unofficially. But before we do, let's take a look at the package set overall. It looks really, really nice. This set contained no fewer than seven figures, all cold weather themed. There's two vipers, two snow serpents, a snow serpent officer, a televiper, and of course, Scrap Iron. The only character that's not a nameless trooper. Oh, and just for completeness sake... I'll mention there's a brother set that's desert themed that came out at the same time. Both sets fall under the Extreme Conditions name, but that's not really relevant here. The figures are nicely arranged in great looking action poses. So I have to point out, Scrap Iron here is about to blow the Televiper's hand off with his gun. Also, several figures aren't actually holding their guns, they're kinda suspended in the air. Well, I can't really say much more without opening this bloody thing, so I don't have a choice here. Sorry, mint and box collectors. Meet Scrap Iron. This figure was released in 2008, duh with one original body part. Yeah, his torso is from a Cobra Trooper, while his legs are from a Firefly figure. His head sculpt is new, though. I didn't talk about this figure much way back in my Scrap Iron review, since I didn't have it then. But now I can correct that oversight! Now, for once, I'm gonna ignore the size of these modern figures compared to the classic ones, since this was a seven-figure set, meant to be one team, so their sizes are fine relative to each other. As for the figure itself, it's a decent version of Scrap Iron and a decent Arctic figure. The colors are subdued and appropriate. I do like how they elected to not go for the obvious white color to represent the cold weather toy, instead opting for light gray and blue. I really appreciate that! The main way to identify him as Scrap Iron is the shape of the helmet, which does the original justice. By the way, his vest is technically an accessory, as it is removable, but it's such a pain in the ass to remove, and the figure looks very stupid without it, so I just consider it part of the figure. In the same vein, we have to look at the helmet again, or the helmet's visor to be specific. That thing's an accessory too, and it is removable. Yes, 2008 was the first time we'd get to see Scrap Iron's face. And? Well, that's unfortunate. He only has one good eye, the other is horribly scarred. And though I hadn't noticed before, his whole face has scars. That's weird. There's nothing in the original character's file card to indicate he has these kind of deformities. We'll have to get back to that. Don't get me wrong, the face sculpt is very nicely done, I just find it weird, you know. What's even weirder is that they used the same head a year later in the Rise of Cobra line. But there, the visor isn't removable. Maybe because that line was aimed at children, while this figure was aimed at collectors? The only criticism I have of this toy is that the arms look a bit thin, almost like they belong on a stick figure, especially compared to some of the others. I'd almost call this an homage considering the first figures, had the same feel when compared to later ones. Scrap Iron did come with proper accessories. There's a revolver that fits nicely in a molded on holster, as well as an okay machine gun. He also has his iconic missile launcher with remote. The only difference with the original is that the missiles are blue instead of red to fit in with the team. Huh, you think he did that himself? 
like he found out he had an arctic assignment, so he painstakingly painted all these missiles blue just to fit in? Anyway, it's nice to see this thing again. It's always been a great accessory. Overall, yeah, nice figure. Now, as I've already done my Scrap Iron review, we won't be going into the full character per se, just as it pertains to this set. And the first thing that springs to mind is... why Scrap Iron? Why was this character chosen for the Arctic Assault set? There's nothing in the character's past bio that would make him particularly suitable for a cold weather assignment. But looking back, that's true of everybody in Cobra's command structure. Unlike the Chos, who have many specialists who could lead an Arctic mission, like Snowjob or Iceberg, no named Cobra fills that role. Sure, you have nameless troops enough, like Snow Serpents or Ice Vipers, but no actual named character dedicated to working in a Sub-Zero environment. Kind of an oversight in the original toy line when you think about it. Still, Scrap Iron wasn't just randomly picked. There is a reason for him being there. And for that, we need to look at the back of the box to find out why this team exists in the first place. It states Cobra is building a new powerful weapon on a secret base in the Arctic, and this team has been sent to guard it. Okay, so it's not really an assault squad then, is it? This would be more of a defense squad. But since they're the bad guys, the term defense doesn't really go with their general characterization, so assault squad it is. Semantics aside, this does explain why Scrap Iron is here. After all, he is a weapons designer and tester, so it makes sense to put him in charge of that facility. Unfortunately, the file card that came with this version sorta contradicts that. Most of it is just a carbon copy of the original file card, but there is a little added in that's relevant here. It says he's currently leading an elite assault squad that's guarding a Cobra weapons plant in the Arctic. And his perfectionism, as well as his weaponry, will ensure no G.I. Joe attack will be successful. So what, he's just guarding the facility? That would be like putting Iron Man in charge of security at the Avengers R&D lab. Sure, he could do the job, but his talents would be a bit wasted. I think we're expected to read quite a bit between the lines here. For one thing, we can assume he's in charge of the whole base, and has a hand in designing this new never-specified weapon. Reading even further between the lines, there's an obvious answer as to why he has scars. He builds experimental weapons, and one of them probably literally blew up in his face. That, or he's got a lifelong grudge against Jokey Smurf. All in all, Scrap Iron was a good pick for this special pack, so you do have to infer reasons as to why that is. And that was Arctic Scrap Iron, a pretty neat figure and character, and a good way to start off our look at this remarkable set. I'll see you next time everybody, and hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing?